Hi friends, it's Dean Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life and I've been trying to film this video for over an hour. Here we have the St. Joseph Guide for the Roman Franciscan Liturgy Hour, the four volume edition, although this is also available for the one volume Christian prayer. This is the one for 2022 and it tells you when you're going to need which of the four volumes here as well as it's going to tell you right here numbers in boldface type tell you you're going to need the proper offices of the franciscan saints and blessed which is a separate supplement where do you get that supplement same place confraternity of penitents holy angels gift shop um, i'm going to put all that in the description below so what does it mean this is pretty easy peasy you're going to look at it it's going to tell you the month what volume you should be in then you're going to come down to the date and then it'll tell you like um saint thomas of oh, friday saint thomas aquinas priest and doctor it's a memorial what page number and it's going to give you the page numbers for all the different prayers throughout the day if you see over here after see after saint colette it has some dark page numbers. That's what it was talking about. You're going to have to get out your Franciscan insert into your four volume or your uh, Christian prayer book. And then you'll be able to look up those darkened page numbers mean they're from the supplement. They had to have a shorthand to keep this nice and short so that you can keep it inside your four volume or one volume liturgy of the hours because we need to be celebrating our Franciscan saints and blesseds just like Father Wade Menendez had been talking about at the end of the book um, in the four last things one of the devotions that is super great to do every day is to look up a saint just read something short on a saint preferably once a day but if you can only do it once a week that's fine and we all know I've reviewed before a book on Franciscan saints that was questionable as to its sources because Every saint, it seemed, had this super crazy liberal take to the saint stories. And it was like, where did they get that information? There were no footnotes or anything that really told us where they got these very unusual takes on the saints. And so we've been looking for another book for quite some time. I was excited to find this one from Tao Publishing. It is by Michael, I think you would say at Coberlin, OFS. So it looks like he's already a secular Franciscan. And here's the really interesting, the full title. The Stories of the Third Order Secular Franciscan Saints and Blesseds in History, How Being a Secular Franciscan Helps One Become a Better Catholic and Follower of Jesus Christ. The book is a little bit different because it opens up, sorry, it was published in 2014. I'm jumping straight in and it opens up with the prayer before the crucifix, the blessing of St. Francis to Brother Leo. Then there's a quick dedication that lets you know that these are once upon a time stories of the third order saints and blessed who now live happily ever after in unending joy of the Trinity in eternal life. We can rejoice that they are still present with us. The troubadour of Assisi who loves Holy Mother Church continues to dance before the Lord and beckons us to join him in following Jesus Christ. The Franciscan Third Order, as well as the First and Second Franciscan Orders, cannot be seen or written about unless one looks to the 13th century St. Francis of Assisi, who found God in the suffering, prayer, and humility. His love was the baby in the crib of Bethlehem, the crucified Savior on the cross who became our Redeemer, and the Eucharistic Lord on the altar at the hands of the priest. He thoroughly honored Mary as the mother of God. One man lit a spiritual fire that raged in goodness and peace against the feudal bonds that held a grip upon mankind throughout the entire world, and his movement continues to do so. The founder had to answer to Christ if he was to following the servant or the master, and when he did, he was on the way to becoming the saint and the prophet, whom God used to heal many and spread his kingdom as a knight of the great king. I think... There is a hint that the sources for this book are going to be the early documents because the name of the three chunky monkey books that we're always talking about were the founder, the prophet, and the saint. So I'm thinking those are going to be sources for this book. Um, it goes on to talk a little bit more about St. Francis. It's just the two little pages there. And then we have some acknowledgments and he lists friar after friar that were his sources. Um, some of them, they do list the documents, but mainly it's just those friars. Introduction. Um, it's a little bit of an introduction on on the, how the book's laid out. And it is going to start out 
with St. Francis and it's going to then move its way to the third order. Um, and I'll just tell you here, there's no table of contents, there's no index. You're really gonna need your bookmarks the Confraternity of Penitents sends you. So chapter one, and at first I was excited thinking these were on the outside of the page so I could just flip through and find the chapters. They're not always there, sometimes they're in here. That's not gonna help you at all. You're gonna need a really good bookmark. If the ones that you get for free, either the prayer card or the 1000priest.org information card inside um, that you get from the Confraternity of Holy In Confraternity of Penitents, Holy Angels Gift Shop. If these bookmarks don't work for you or you find that they're slipping out, get a magnetic bookmark may be the way to go for you. Um, because it's going to start out with St. Francis of Assisi finds true joy. It's only a couple pages, and there's a couple pages on the second order of St. Francis. And then there's a little bit on the first members of the third order. This has been disputed by some. Some people joke that it was St. Francis because he was a layman when he founded, founded the Franciscans, which he didn't even mean to do. Ha oh, ha, was he the first member? And some people say it was Brother Jacoba. Lots of people like to joke about who the first um, third order Franciscans were, but this is generally accepted as the official first ones. It was a married couple, Lucius and Buena Donna. But very quickly, that's like not even three pages. Chapter four is the rule of the third order. That should be an interesting discussion. Is it talking just about the early rule or is it going to get up to the modern rules? Uh, yeah, because then it's Pope Nicholas the fourth, Pope Leo the 13th, Pope Paul the sixth. So we have all the rules are, are kind of briefly talked about in there. And then the Franciscan third order in history is chapter five. Here's where it gets interesting. Because there is a short bit just about the third order in history. Um, then we have chapter six, organization of the third order fraternities in the United States. Chapter seven, the stories of the third order, secular Franciscans in history. And there is a little bit of an introduction there. And then that's on page 38, but by the time you get to page 43, it's saying 13th century. And it starts with Blessed Pica Bernadone, which should sound familiar. That's St. Francis's mother, I believe. It says mother from a noble family of Borlemonts of St. Francis of Assisi and wife of Pietro Bernadone of the house of Morricone, a wealthy Italian cloth merchant of Assisi. She is called blessed in the hearts and minds of the people even though she is not formally beatified. She not only loved and cared for her children, she was pious and inspired St. Francis early on with thoughts of heaven, teaching faith by word and example. When she was having difficulties while pregnant with Francis, a stranger in pilgrim's clothes told her that her child would not come into the world until she had been carried to a stable. Jesus was born in a stable too. A little chapel now stands on this spot where St. Francis was born. The mysterious stranger appeared again and made the sign of the cross on the shoulder of the child and recommended careful care of the child. Pika gave her son a love for poetry, freeing Francis from his father's dreams for him to carry on his business, and thus setting him on the path for his life of poverty and service. His mother was gentle, and his father had a temper, concerned more about the things of this world. She worried about her son in the wars before his conversion. She knew in her heart what her son really wanted, and she always encouraged him and prayed for him. She sought spiritual guidance from Francis when her husband died. She assumed the penitential attire of a third order Franciscan, always ready to do works of holy charity. And you can see why these were called Once Upon a Time. They're written very much in a story format. And you can also see that it just goes on. Each one has roughly a little page of a story. It says third order secular Franciscan, then the person's name, um, the year of birth and death. And they're really just... A little story this goes on for if she was the first one she's on page 43 you can see how far I'm going and they go through they are ordered as they would be in history so we start out in the 13th century there's the 17th century I see them flipping by 19th and 20th century we're up to page 175 Wow 
we're going all the way up to page 221. And the last one listed was Third Order Secular Franciscan, Servant of God, Brother Simon Van Ackeren, who lived from 1918 to 1938. Ah, man, John Bradburn probably just missed it because there's St. Pope John the 23rd right before him, St. Gregory Grassi and Companions. Man, if they added just one more page, I think it'd be John Bradburn, but I don't think he's in here. Ah, man. But so it even includes Servant of God. How fun. So we're going to learn so much about so many secular Franciscans. This is going to be wonderful. And then there's a small section in the back beginning on page 222 why join the franciscan third order hopefully by then it's talked about the name oh and look i did find there's not an index um so why join the franciscan third order it's a question in order format like i failed to see the purpose of the third order there's too much praying in the third order to suit me the third order would make religious of us who are in the world for my part if i wished to become a religious i would enter the cloister so it's a question and answer format <laughs> like i like 23 most tertiaries are not my type, or I am too young to think of joining the Third Order. I am not good enough. I'm a member of so many societies already. Tons of questions and answers. And they are adapted and abridged from Father Hilarion Dwork, OFM, Seventh Third Order Centenary. I don't know. Um, that's listed. That's back on page 230. That's where he got that list. And then there's a list of sources. Ta ta ta. Awesome. List of sources. So there aren't footnotes or endnotes, but he does give you wow. Wow. So he gives you what one, two, three, three and a tiny bit. So I'm just gonna say three pages list of sources. Who are the sources? Um, of course, Father Marion Habig. OFM, who wrote the St. Francis of Assisi Omnibus of Sources. And then, yes, he wrote the um, early works. When I said earlier, all the early documents, the saint, the founder, the prophet, as well as the index. We also have um, Father Marion Habig also has his Franciscan Book of Saints. Another good source is Louis Bersack, OFM Cap. The Saints and Blessed of the Third Order of St. Francis. That's from 1943. William Wicks, OFS. So there's a ton of these listed here. It'd be interesting if that book I hated was one of the sources. That'd be ironic. Oh, well. Um, so I don't know yet, but that would, that would be ironic. Anyway, so I really like this little book. I'm excited to jump into it. And each of these little stories are just one page. You can surely read one page a day. If you're going to be dramatic, read one a week. And think about that saint during the week in your prayers. And ask them. Say, you know, Blessed Peter Gambacorti of Pisa. Pray for me. You can add them to your prayers. What a wonderful group of friends we're going to get to make. I wonder how many are in here. That would have been lovely to know too. But as I say, I'm going to probably maybe write up a little one page one on John Bradburn, stick him in the end of the book. He is a servant of God, so he would qualify to be in the book already. Okay, friends, this is the book, The Stories of the Third Order Secular Franciscan Saints and Blesseds in History. And don't forget, if you've not gotten your 2022 guide, it's still time to do it. God bless you, friends. Bye.